Welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Experiment Podcast. Today is going to be an awesome episode. Drew is rocking a new chair. So we are going to go for a long time because he's super comfortable. So let's just get into it. What's been going on? Nothing much, dude. Big seminar uh, this last weekend, right? It was, yeah, it yeah. was like five days ago. Saturday. It like, yeah, it feels like forever ago because uh, like I said, I was talking previously, I basically just blacked out on that thing. I woke up at probably 8 a.m., went to the gym. Probably did four sets, and I was like, "Okay, I have nerve. I, I like th- these nerves aren't going to get out. I just got to get on there and yeah. do it." Go on there about nine thirty a.m. and yeah, as you saw, we went till five o'clock p.m. and I had to stop it. Like no, they wouldn't. People wouldn't leave, so I was like, "Okay, yeah, we have to shut this down." Yeah. Give people context what you kind of did um, and what it was for those who don't know. Yeah, so I I launched probably like two and a half weeks ago, I've been talking a lot on here about not doing Amazon anymore and not knowing what I'm going to do in the future. And really, I've just been on this middle ground for the last like six months of knowing that I'm probably not going to do Amazon in the future, but not wanting to say that just because I don't know, it just feels weird. And I was like, all right, if I do this seminar and say I'm quitting and I do something and just like stop posting about Amazon, then I know I'm out, like I'm done, sell my inventory, do the seminar. And now I don't have to worry about it anymore. So that was overall why I wanted to do it. And what I was going to do on the seminar and what I did was just spill everything, show my inventory lab, every supplier, every ace and all the profitable stuff. And then kind of gave some actionable steps. Like I, I never, I didn't yeah. practice for that. I just made it, put a PowerPoint together. And I was like, all right, most, I got hundreds and hundreds of questions, but I thought, okay, I'll just run through them really quick. And then if they're good, I'll answer them. If they're bad, I'm just going to quickly go through. That was kind of, I tried to just set the tone. Yeah. Uh, that was the point of me doing that. I'm like, all right, but really I want you guys to act li- ask live questions based on that information I show. Because I just didn't really know how to structure. I didn't want it to be some professional, like, hey, or do X, do X, do X. Because for one, that's boring. And I, I don't want to yeah. do that for that long. Not People practical don't. either. No, at all. Yeah, because it's not going to be recorded. So it needs to be stuff that you you ask a question, and you get like a personalized type of answer, and other people can take notes. And like I then I included a one on one call at the end of it for like a little bit of an upsell, and some people end up getting it cheaper with the affiliate stuff. But yeah, that was like the big thing, and I, I think it turned out fairly well. What do you think? You were there for basically the whole time. Were you there the whole time? Yeah, I was there the whole time. Uh, I think I I missed like a half hour of it because I was upstairs doing something. Uh, so like my takeaways, a couple of takeaways, I think that are really good. Um, where I think how you set it up where it wasn't recorded, I feel like that would probably be like a selling point for a lot of people that would be a no go. Um, mm-hmm. but for me, like you would really have to pay attention. So I think that is kind of an added bonus where, you know, this stuff, you can't watch it back. And granted, like he wasn't going like extremely fast or if someone was like, yo, can you go back to that? He did go back to that. But I think there's something to one, you're paying attention. The second part of that is we all like we all will say, oh, we're not going to share it or, you know, but we all know we all have one best friend or someone who's oh, like I didn't get to go. I was going to go. Could you show me just a little bit? And then it gets out and it ruins it for everyone. So I think the idea of just like you ran through all your property ASINs, all the stores you shopped at, like if you actually have to write that down, like someone could have, I mean, I guess someone could have took a picture or whatever. But for the most part, I think that actually protects what you taught for the people who came. So I think that was kind of a takeaway for me. Um, one of the biggest takeaways, which you said on it, like I did take notes. I don't know where the hell they are, but um, was, hey, guys, like this is almost for your protection. Like a lot of people are like super concerned too about like, oh, you're giving away all the stores or the items or this or that. And this is the people who like paid for it. And you were like, listen, no offense, but half of you guys aren't even going to do this anyway. There's about 30 <laughs> stores here that even if you all source them you're going to be in different sections looking at different stuff it's just crazy to me sometimes when people look at amazon like that and i used to be like that it's like oh if i tell drew about nike Mm -hmm. then he's gonna buy all the nike and i can't it's just kind of ridiculous um in that aspect so i think in general like selling on amazon you just have to have this mindset of you know there's a ton of stuff out there you just have to find it 
Um, another takeaway I really liked that you brought up was um, almost that to kind of that point, there is profit everywhere and you want to be focused. So you mentioned to focus on a couple of categories, uh, a couple of stores and to kind of not, I feel like you focus a lot on not being flustered, not having 40 million browser tabs open. Hey, only go one storefront at a time and keep a, I mean, this isn't, we're not like spilling, spilling the sauce. Like, no, this is just went. like, yeah. But like, this is more general. I don't want everyone to feel like they got ripped off who went. No, um, this, stuff, this is stuff I say all the time, anyways. But I know that if people paid for that stuff too, like, because I had to give context around all that mm-hmm. stuff. Like, this stuff you're saying now, I have to give context around like why you really need to pay attention to this section and like why this yeah. is actually important. Because if I just showed this stuff, it's, I think it's hard. I was trying to give as much context as possible. Yeah. So I had to say stuff like, don't worry about everything. Worry about like one thing at a time because they also can get to discuss it further. But yeah, keep going. Yeah. So I think that was good. Um, just, to, I think a lot of the, it was surprising to me. I, I couldn't see the back end where you were doing, but I could just tell like how your reaction and knowing for you, everyone wanted to like submit storefronts for you to go through and like, be like, Oh, how are these people getting it? And I always find that funny because a lot of the times, that stuff isn't profitable anymore and probably won't be. I mean, there. I would say out of everything in someone's storefront, if someone's sourcing really good, they either got a really crazy deal on it that, you know, like like a Black Friday deal, like 50% off, it's for two days. It isn't com- it maybe happens three or four times a year. So you're not finding that. Or it's a secret like coupon code or just something and i think when you're selling on amazon you don't want to be lazy like that like that is just so late like tell me how these people got that for me every time i look at a storefront i more look at categories brands oh like they have i don't know whatever brand a label this is well what else does that company make like obviously if you could find the labels great but i almost feel like they wanted a magic pill yeah. for that. Well, that that's and that's not, not how it works. Like that's how you build a shitty business. Like yeah. a magic pill, like that doesn't help you. Yeah. I mean that I did, I did say submit storefronts. And then once I started going through them, I was like, all right, actually this is super counterintuitive. It's like exactly the opposite of what I'm trying to teach here. So we're not going to do that. So yeah, the, the main thing was just like, yeah, like everyone's good at different stuff. And that was – and I was trying to give as many things as possible that you could get good at. I think at the end there were probably like eight to nine things that were like actionable immediately. And I was like yeah. pick one to two. If you try them all, you're going to fail. But try to pick yeah. one or two of these things. And and then a lot of the times so I've already done a few calls, like these after consulting calls. And man, it's crazy how – like because I'm, I'm like show me your business because I'm going to be out. Like I don't have anything to gain from this. Crazy like the – the differentiation between all these stores. Like I have not seen anyone selling the same type of thing yet. And I've done all these different things. Everyone's doing way different stuff, like their own little loops. Cause I thought that kind of everybody, when you're on Twitter and you're looking at storefronts, you you just think everybody's selling like Nike and stuff. Yeah. But then I get there, like you have guys sell X category and this brand. And I have to tell them like these certain things of dude, I talked about a lot of stuff, but your immediate highest ROI on listening to me will be doing more of what you're doing now and then adding in something that I said adjacent to what you're doing. So if I'm doing, I taught some stuff about 8A, things like that. If you aren't doing any 8A and you don't do any of the categories that frequently pop up there, then don't even worry about that. Do something else because you you don't want to try to add that on to you doing, if you're doing like whatever it is. I don't want to give any examples, but yeah, that that's the one thing that I just kind of took for it. It's just everybody's so scatterbrained. Like people think there's bigger stuff out there and they they try to they listen to too many people online. I kept saying yeah. that too. Like best thing you can do is just stop following everybody. Just turn your Twitter off. And I'm trying to give advice too to people of it, like when we get off this call, that's what I've been telling them is you need to act like that you've never saw anyone else in the Amazon space again. You just need to take the information I just gave you and just act yeah. like it's you and the computer. And the, your only job is to find cheap stuff in these certain categories and brands and things and then sell them. Like stop thinking about anything else. Just think of like base level. What would you do if you just got started? Because a lot of times it just way overcomplicates it, like really bad. All these extensions, all these different things. Yeah. 
too many shiny objects and you can get shiny object syndrome within Amazon. That's the problem with it. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree 100% with you there. And I think, too, a lot of what you did cover and like what you were just saying, it is funny how everyone's storefront is very different. Everyone has different expertise. And I think that's what kind of makes Amazon, Amazon, obviously. And that's how you win. You have these all these differentiators. And I think, like you said, a lot of people think the grass is always greener. Oh, you know, I'm not in apparel. Like I should sell Nike or I should sell well, just a couple other brands you mentioned on the seminar that I won't talk about. Um, but is that like the best fit for you? If you're crushing it selling shoes and have like a way to deal with returns and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the category you talked about, maybe not the best fit, but you did mention some sites where you could get like cheaper stuff or ways to get, I can't say that without giving away, but you did like <laughs> say some different things, how to get prices down. I'll say that, how to get prices down and little like hacks around it um, that you could do, use. I feel like everyone's going to be like, do another one after they watch this. Um, <laughs> I'll talk a bit about, about that. Cause I've heard uh, a lot. Of but yeah, I thought overall it was good. It was what, seven hours, what you talked about. And I think for something like that, I do think it is, I think some people need like that total immersion where it's just like seven straight hours. And I do think out of the seven hours, Everyone says, oh, like, that's ridiculous. Like, how am I supposed to know all this stuff or remember all this stuff? And I think part of the point of kind of doing something like that is you don't remember all this stuff. You just remember yeah. the important stuff or the stuff that resonated the most with you or the stuff you should take action on or whatever. And I do think people might be worse off if you did record it. Yeah. Because they try to do absolutely everything and then it, it wouldn't work for them. But for being like, okay, what out of this information makes the most sense for me and my business? And how do I apply that? I think that is the biggest point of it. Um, I once heard someone say this, and I think this is a great example of exactly what happened. I think when you buy something or anything or go on vacation, and they relate it to vacation, they're like, oh, let's say you spend five grand to go on vacation or whatever. And you, you're, you go water skiing, you go, you do all this stuff. Me, I just go sit by the pool, sit by the beach or whatever. I could look at that Drew got more out of the vacation than I did because he yep. did all this stuff. But in reality, maybe I got more out of it because I just sat there relaxed. I did what I wanted to do. I did exactly what I wanted to do. I feel refreshed now. So it's irrelevant that I didn't go water skiing or do all the other shit that Drew did. Like we got the same benefits, but our vacations look much different. And I think that's the exact same thing. It's like, oh, I need to get all this strategy. I need to write all this stuff. It's like, no, like two or three of those will change your business entirely. Just executing on that instead of being like, oh, I got to do all the things. No, you do like two or three of the things. And like, if you took good notes or whatever, then like implement other things later. But it's like funny. Everything's going around Instagram right now. And everyone's talking about how they're just focusing. A lot of people are just like, I'm focusing on Amazon, Walmart, and the Amazon Influencer Program. It's like, how is that possible? Like, how Not could me. you focus on three things? Oh, and, and my content. It's, it's like, what are you talking about? Like, there's just no way that you could like, do all of it or or give your like complete effort i'm not saying there's anything wrong with like spreading the money around and doing whatever or trying all three things and then like figuring out like what you like best but i just find it like funny if everyone wanted like every single thing you covered you wouldn't know what to do with that like it would yeah. it just would not be beneficial to you yep well, on, on the factor of this, what about the uh, the entertainment factor? You think the seven hours went by slow or fast? Did I do well there? I think it went by really fast. I think for me, like I learned a bunch of stuff, like going there. Um, yeah, I just think it goes by really fast. I think if you're into something, like there is no slow. Like going yeah. to Miami Sellers Conference Saturday, like I'm speaking there. So if you want a ticket, click down below. Um, 
it's a huge day. There's like going to be 30 people speaking. It flies. It's like, like, how does this end? Um, Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if you're into a topic, if you're, you know, I think keeping it light, I don't know. I thought it went really smooth that way. And I think it was interesting. And I think you proved the argument because uh, I forgot when it was in, but it's getting towards the end. And I think I won't say how many people are there, but um, you're like only two people left. And this was like six or seven hours in. And someone's like, oh, there's only two people left. You're like, no, only two people left. I was like, and this was like five or six hours in. Yeah, it was five Um, hours in. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I couldn't believe that. And one of the people that left is one of the guys that was helping me with the marketing. So it really was only one person that left. Like that was was it. Because there was you and two other guys that were in my coaching program. Because I just wanted you guys to – make sure I was like providing yeah. value. And then I would watch the text come in. You're like, dude, I've never even heard of any of this stuff. I'm like, okay, sick. I'm doing like, good. Oh, just give like, that was great. Just say this one other thing to like, just tie yeah. it all together. And then you do that. And I was like, all right, there you go. Yeah, it was good. I'm happy that I had people there. Cause I didn't, uh, I didn't really think too much about like what it was going to be like me in the middle of the screen and no one else able to react to each other or knowing who was there or knowing like, I don't have any responses besides the questions coming in because I had never tested that. Like this was literally didn't practice, went off the whim because I knew that if I just was there authentically and just saying whatever I wanted to, then I knew that I would just give a lot of information. And I try, I like, I don't even know what else I could have covered at the end. I'm like, guys, I think this is it. Like, obviously I can get more intricate with stuff, but at this point we can save that for the future because there was just a lot covered. I don't even know how I talked that long, really, at all. I think back on it, I'm like, how did it even – and there was probably four breaks, maybe, playing the music. How about what yeah. the music you like that? <laughs> yeah, I, I love Kanye, so I, I was yeah. a big fan of that. I think that was one part, too. So for those of you who don't know, it was a Zoom call, and it was super different. So, like, you couldn't see anyone. So it was basically just, like, Drew on the screen, and there was just, like, a chat box or a question box rather, and you could just type in there and you could either be like your person or you could submit like an anonymous question. And that was pretty much it. And it was just like his screen. And I thought that was actually, I think it enhanced kind of the viewership and just focus. Like, I think sometimes it's weird when you go into these things, you're like, oh, who's this person? Who's that person? Oh, I know that person. Like all this like stuff starts going through your head. Um, and also seeing the questions, not being able to see the questions. Cause I think that makes you think of your own questions. Like really, what do you want? Not, yeah. Oh, like John asked, Oh, what stores do you shop at? Like, oh, I should ask like what stores or, or that maybe that's a bad example, but someone along that line, it just makes you more focused on yourself. Like when all you can see is the presenter and not all these other people, or the questions or the comments that are being asked. I think a lot of times you get distracted by that stuff. And why would you want to be reading the questions and like knowing whose username is this or that when you're at a live thing, you should be like taking notes, paying attention, not kind of worrying about like the chat or whatever. Um, So I thought that was a really cool part about it too. And just, I think being anonymous too, I think that allows people to ask the questions they really want to ask. Yeah. Without like if we're all together, like maybe me and you are in a conference or whatever. And I'm just like, Drew's here. Like, I don't want to ask that question. He's going to think, so, you know what I mean? So you could just ask it anonymously, or you could be like, yeah, I want you to know that I asked this question or, or whatever. Uh, so yeah. I thought that was like a really nice piece of it as well. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. It got me. I don't know. I didn't know what to expect from all of it. I was just, uh, I wasn't like nervous, I guess, but I was, I just wanted to perform. Like I wanted to make sure people got as much value as I said that they would get. And I think they did. Like, I think I do. Yeah. like, honestly, and this is not me just being braggadocious either, but I really think that seven hours was the most valuable piece of Amazon content ever made on the internet in the OA space. Like I, I would be shocked if yeah. there's another I, piece I of agree. content. Yeah. When I got done, that's the first thing I thought I was like, Whoa, out of everything that everyone's posted on the internet ever, I think that was probably the most valuable seven hour piece. So the people that were there that know that as well. Like I've never been, I've never seen anything like that ever. Yeah. And I didn't expect to put that on either. I mean, I thought that I would do pretty good, but 
as in depth as all that was and the direct advice and the brands and all that stuff and how I was finding this stuff and how I thought about it all. Yeah. I just think that that playbook would just make, I should have charged a lot more. That was like what my big conclusion. I was like, man, I could have charged way more for that. Cause if you can't make the money back on that, that's like a serious yeah. problem. Cause that was just a lot of that stuff. You go implement immediately and get a return yeah. on. So. And I think that too is, I feel like a lot of people be like, Oh, that's crazy. Like, how could you say that? But it's like, you gave away what people can't their loops, yeah. their sources, where they buy the most, like their most profitable ASINs. Like, and like, that's not a knock on anyone else making content. Cause like I make content or whatever. And people tell me all the time, it's, it's just valuable. Hard. It's a, it's a different type of content. Yep. Um, and yeah, when you could have a shortcut to 20, 30 stores that no one is talking about on Instagram and all these other places, um, you know, that's just an ultimate edge right there. Yeah, that was, that was like, I didn't like, notice how big, yeah. Like no one can do that because they would put themselves yeah. out of business, but I am out of business. So I didn't care. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that too. I think one of the other things is, which is kind of ridiculous, is I think a lot of, and I get it too, because I mean, I've had it happen to me. Like I share an ASIN with someone to be nice and then they like, ransack my store and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think a lot of the times too is when you're doing these one-on-ones, I feel like people are super afraid to be like, oh yeah, here's my storefront. What do you think of it? And obviously yeah. maybe it's a little different now because like you're out of the game and you're saying you're not going to buy stuff, yada, yada, yada. But even if you were in the game, I just don't think people understand. It's like, we don't care. Like, I'm not going to your store. Like, you paid me to help you. Like, I think more people need to get like vulnerable. I always say that. Like, people will send me sometimes. It drives me insane. People will send me, like, a screenshot of, like, a Keepa chart. They're like, would you buy this? It's like, I don't know. Like, I need to see more. They're like, oh, I don't want to give you the pre-. You're like, you're asking me for help. And, like, you're worried that I'm going to, like, go to Walmart and buy your $10 bottle of vitamins or whatever the hell you're sending. Like, are you serious right now? Like, do you want help? Like, it almost tells me, like, you are not serious. Like you can't be like, you're just not. Um, So I think like, if you really want help, like you got to put yourself out there, make yourself vulnerable. And if you think that person's going to ransack your store, like don't pay that person. (laughs) Like that's a surefire way. If you're afraid to like share something, like I would not like share with that person or do whatever. Um, So I think that is, was like kind of a big takeaway as well. Um, You know, you got to be open. If you want like help, help like from a person who knows what they're doing, you got to, you know, reveal all your cards or they can't help you. Yeah. Well, th- well and you had asked me before this, like, what, am I going to do something else like that again or whatever? And I really think and somebody else said that too. And it's somebody that I got a bunch of feedback from it all and all this stuff. They were asking me uh, in the chat, you know, if I can do coaching, I'm like, no, like this is the, I already said I'm not doing this anything. But I think that if I did anything in the future, I would probably just take one-on-one sessions for like an hour and then just you show me your whole store and I just tell you what I think about it, what you should double down on, what you should cut out, how you should focus. And I'd charge like a, a lot of money for it because I, I would, you know, I'd probably take some really in-depth time, maybe even more than an hour. So I don't know if I'm even going to yeah. do that, but people keep inquiring about stuff. And I'm like, I mean, if if people really want it and I know that, I know that I can help people if I can see their store and stuff and they can trust me because they know one, I know what I'm talking about. And two, I don't I, like I'm never going to steal their shit because right. I'm not selling anything. So I don't know. I might do that in the future. I don't know, but I'm going to start. I'm going to probably post content on my personal stuff, probably change my name from drew FBA. Maybe I'll rebrand, which sucks, but it's whatever. It just doesn't align with like anything I'm going to do in the future. So that'll probably be what's coming there too, which I'll, I'll launch some kind of offer, not for like Amazon people. It'll just be, just trying to grow my social medias in general, which I have, I have some decent ideas on that based off of consulting and stuff like that that I've done with Amazon. And I think I'm going to, I kind of found a, a product market fit type of thing. I think we'll see how it works, but I think I'll probably start putting out more content about that. And then maybe even run ads to that and start like a, a different little offer. That's just not Amazon related and kind of out of the space. Yeah. You got, do you have any name ideas? 
Yeah. So the main thing is a lot of, a lot of people come to me on these consulting calls and they're like, Hey, I'm doing this, but like the general vibe of where they're at is just not great. And I've told multiple Mm. people that like, you need to just stop selling. Like you obviously don't like this a lot. There's not a lot in your future with it. And you have other skills. Like if they're like really good talking to me on a call, like this one guy came to me and he was just good looking guy and was really good at talking, had a sales background and was just struggling to get this Amazon stuff like really up. And I'm like, why do you even want to do this, man? And uh, like broke down all this stuff. And then I'm like, dude, you should just do these two things instead. Like that, that benefits your skills like directly. I think you're, you're in Amazon because you got marketed Amazon, but really you could do like anything. So I've done that. And then the same thing kind of happened like a month and a half ago with somebody. And they both got lots of value out of that. And I I got to put time into it. And I like doing it because I got to know them and that kind of thing. So I think I'll probably do something to where I can show people a path to go down with making money online. And then I have a friend that does a lot of fitness and diet and that kind of thing. And he's really, really knowledgeable about that stuff. So maybe have like a money section and a wellness section. It's like a two in one mm. type of thing. And it's not like going to be a thing where I'm going to make you a hundred K or I'm going to get you a six pack. It'll be more so getting people focused. Cause that's another yeah. thing I'm like passionate about is that people just, we have like a limited information online, but it's almost so much that it's a negative because you just don't know where to go. Me and you have both been dealing with this, obviously. Yeah. Like there's just so many things that you don't know. And I think that if I could provide somebody a path you know, with, with where to make money online and how to get lean or gain muscle or whatever they wanted to yeah. do. Cause it's not, there's all these one size fits all solutions, but it's just not the case. Like if you want to lose weight and I'm like, Oh, best way to lose weight is carnivore, but you don't like meat. That's <laughs> literally impossible. Like, yes, it would yeah. work if you did it, but you hate meat. So you're not going to stick to it. And then you're going to think there's something wrong with it. You're going to start justifying ways that carnivore is bad. <laughs> so you're going to go do vegetarian. And then right. maybe something else happens. So and they're gonna say you're a bad coach. It's like Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. I just want to do not something really. where I don't have some kind of big thing that I'm claiming for people, and it's not gonna be super high ticket either. It'll be something that I can work with you for whatever amount of period of time. And I'm hope I look back on this and it's really good. Because this is the the general idea of now and just like six weeks or not a nine weeks, something like that, and push somebody down a path based on me getting to know them and him getting to know them in the fitness Mm. context. So like I'll take one-on-one calls about like, what have you done in the past? What job do you do now? All this different stuff. Okay. Here's a list of information. You don't need to look at any more information. Go down this path and we'll recheck in next week. We'll see what you think. If you don't like any of the stuff you've looked at, we'll reassess this again because maybe I read you wrong. Same thing with the fitness stuff. It's like, cause he can write him any diet plan he wants. He can write any fitness plan because he knows what he's talking about. So kind of like a personalized thing. And I haven't saw any people doing it like that, like combining things. And I think there's lots of people mm-hmm. in America that make 60 grand a year. They aren't, don't have the body they want and they have no clue how to change any of it. So that would yeah. be, that's kind of the, the fit in the market, I think. But we'll see, we'll see how it ends up working. I mean, maybe I don't even do it, but that's kind of where my mind's at right now. That's interesting. Yeah. I think there, that is definitely, and you see it in the Amazon space too. It, when it comes, oh, like what website should I source or what category should I start? Like you could start literally anywhere. I think sometimes that's the hard part or like if you're trying to order dinner and you open up, you know, DoorDash, there's a bazillion different things. I always joke, I was like, oh, I wish there was just almost an app where it would aggregate like basically everything you ever ordered from DoorDash and you just like spin a wheel. And then whatever shows up, like that's your dinner. And it'd be like, oh, okay, I don't have to think about it. Or, oh, I want this. Or do we want that? It's just like, no, like this is what's coming. Um, I think that'd be cool. But yeah, I think that's like the whole part of it too with Amazon. I think a lot of people, I think it's a mix of, and I've definitely been there because we like talk for hours like off of this thing about like where we want to go and other stuff like that. I think it's, Partly, there's just so many different routes you could go and what's the best one and not having FOMO and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's also you see so many people doing things on social media or you're perceiving that they have X or Y and you're, you're on the right path. You just think you're not because you're seeing something else. I think that's a lot of people's problem, like in this actual Amazon business. They think someone else has this like magic formula, this magic keep a search, this magic website, this magic code. And yeah, there's all sorts of stuff like that. But like there is no magic formula. 
most of the people are just sourcing consistently every day. They figured out a couple sites that work for them. And that's basically what they do. Maybe they share leads with someone and kind of do that thing. But for the most part, I really think that's it. And it's really funny. I think Hermosi talks about this all the time. It's like, it's just like the work needs doing. Like everyone wants to do everything else but the work. It's like, no, show me another keep it filter. It's like, why don't you just source the one you have? Like there's yep. stuff there. Switch up the category, switch the seller, switch. Like it's not, there's no secret one. Like for Amazon, like flips, like there's a million different things you could do. Like just pick one and start doing it. And then you'll start to find stuff and you could go from there. Yeah, I think that focus thing is just huge. Like that's just more and more I talk to people about things. I just realize how unfocused the whole world is. And more me and you talk. I just realize how unfocused we are sometimes. So I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. everybody kind of has this problem, but there's no solution to it. Like at least yeah. that we haven't found yet. But I know that for sure I can kind of analyze somebody's thing. And you've, you've brought multiple ideas to me. And I'm usually like, okay, this is a solid idea. You can do this. Or yeah. I wouldn't do that because of this. And you seemingly taking the feedback. So yeah. I think that that's something that maybe I, I can realize that kind of stuff because I've tried so many different things. I've been successful. And I've failed at it. So I think it is like a, I don't know. I think, I think it would be huge to be able to provide that for people. And I think that, yeah, it is a big problem. Yeah, and I think that's the other part too. Like some people aren't open to listening. I think mm -hmm. you have to know yourself. Like I've coached some people who get on the call and we're talking. They're like, oh, like I have not made money with this. Like I'm kind of in debt or whatever. It's like, how do I, like, what's the secret to sourcing? Or like, what's my next step? It's like, it's stop spending money and liquidate all your money, <laughs> all your inventory. And they're like, no, but like, I need to spend to like, make. it's like, no, you need to recoup all your stuff and like start over, like stop yep. spending like there. Yep. And then like, yeah, get your sourcing right. But it, it's just like stuff like that. I think you just really, yeah. When it comes to Amazon, I think one of the things too, there's just so many options. Like I like going through your thing, it's just like, wow, like there's so many different categories, so many different filters and the stuff you covered. Like, is it harder? Sure. Is it super saturated? No, like nothing's ever saturated, saturated. Is it harder? Sure. It's, I mean, who knows? It, it changes all the time. Everyone's complaining about the placement fees right now. And it's like, this stuff happens all the time on Amazon. The fees always go up. There's always hurdles. And it's a good thing because it gets like the non-serious people off the platform or the people who like tank the price. Like those people aren't going to stick around um, for this. So I think you got to look at everything as kind of like an opportunity. Yep. hundred percent. Well, I guess that covers most of the seminar, most of the learning lessons for there. What about your, uh, you want to talk on this Instagram shutdown that just happened to you? Yeah. So super crazy. Uh, was it yesterday? Was it yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Uh, basically, I woke up and I got an email. I went to log on to Instagram and they're basically like, your account is suspended because you violated community guidelines. Didn't say what it was or anything like that. Um, and I was like, okay, like I will appeal this. And they asked me to verify my phone number, email address. I'm like, okay, like this should be up and running and no problem. Um, and then sure enough, I submit all the information. 15 minutes later, I go to log in and they're like, your account is finished. You can't appeal. You're permanently banned. Um, no idea why, no way to appeal for it. I was freaking out. Um, and didn't really know what to do. I actually texted Drew to see if he knew anyone. Uh, he gave me some ideas, but this point of this story i'll go more into it but i did get it resolved how to pay a ton of money uh to some random stranger on the internet um and the powerful story point of this is your network so i literally had knew this person kind of haphazardly don't really talk that often but i knew of them and i was following them and they said hey if your account ever gets suspended let me know 
and I happen to have their phone number. So I texted them. They were able to connect me with the person um, to get my, who helped them get their account back. And basically within an hour or so, uh, I had my account back. And it turns out like there's kind of like this loophole or something. If you hit a certain ad spend, uh, you get like advanced support or something. And this person was able to use that advanced support to get my account unbanned. Uh, so for me, a couple of lessons from this was one, uh, you got to be kind of just like Amazon. You need to be diversified, uh, you know, maybe start an email list or do stuff like that. Um, Two, these companies are just ridiculous. They're so powerful. It was kind of crazy. Like the Instagram thing went down and the Facebook account um, connected to it. I got an email like an hour later, like, yep, you can't use this either. Um, and then the person connected us on WhatsApp and like Meta owns WhatsApp. I'm like, oh shit. Like if this, it's just absolutely insane how powerful these companies are. They don't tell you what you did. It's not like, oh, like if you go through my profile, like I'm not this crazy conspiracy theorist type person. Like, I don't know. They won't even tell you what it is. And then in the blink of an eye, it's gone. Permanent banned. And it just goes to show you. So another takeaway from this is, you know, building a network is important. And I don't know, my Instagram account, it was definitely worth what I had to pay for it. Um, but if I couldn't pay for it, it would be gone. And I think that's just kind of screwed up. Yeah. And like I was telling you, I don't know if people know this, but there's like a whole market of people that pay, they get Instagram taken down and then like make people pay to get them back and that kind of stuff. And that, yeah, it's just, it's crazy how much control that kind of has. And imagine if you made all your money off there, like you, you don't really monetize it a ton. So it doesn't matter in that sense, but imagine if your sole income was Instagram and then it just got taken down. That's kind of terrifying. Yeah, like you said, you have to have you need to have an email list because people can't really take that away from you. And if you diversify to YouTube, Twitter, that kind of stuff. Like we talked about the personal brand thing. It makes you think diversify a bit is probably a better idea. Yeah, and I think it, it goes to show you too, like you don't want to be too reliable on kind of one source or you know, Instagram had the big outage the day before that. Not sure if that was connected to it, but I think it's just not risky, but just all these platforms and just cut you it really made me think how much control they have over kind of you know my business um connecting the people you know i don't really have a ton of well i have a decent amount of phone numbers but you know there are some people i just talk to exclusively on instagram and i have no idea how to get a hold of them except maybe be like hey drew can you dm blah 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 and tell them this is my cell phone number like i got kicked off or whatever um, but yeah, it just goes to show you that you just never know. Um, and sadly enough, I know a lot of people talk like shit about like making money or whatever, but money can solve a lot of problems. Like this problem was taken care of in literally an hour, um, of ha having it happen. And yeah, if I couldn't afford to pay it, like the account would be gone. I mean, that is a sad part of it. And that's the other part. It's like, oh, if I just like couldn't afford it, it's not like you could even go on Instagram and like try to raise funds by like selling a service or something like that, right? You're just kind of screwed. So just something like to think about um, if you do build a personal brand. And I think with all these platforms like Amazon too or Walmart, it's like you never truly own it. It's always theirs and you play by their rules, whether they're fair or not. And a lot of times you cannot get a hold of any of these people. Like even Amazon, if your account gets suspended, like you're dealing with customer service. You're not going to get some rep or like some person on LinkedIn on the phone. And then they're, they're, they have all these guardrails. My cousin knows someone who actually works at Instagram and he's like, no shot. Like it's through the help platform or not. There's nothing they could do. It's done that way for a reason. It's not scalable. There are no favors. I'm just like, damn, like that is absolutely crazy. Yeah, that point you bring up about the Amazon, the Walmart stuff. Um, yeah, I had a talk with someone recently and he was like, well, maybe the Amazon thing is just getting like saturated or whatever. Maybe I'll move over to Walmart and uh, start it over there. And I was like, man, 
if you think the Amazon thing's saturated, what do you think is going on with Walmart? And what do you think is going to happen in the next few years of Walmart? Like, it's the same thing. All these people, like, I think that people have the idea that, uh, that they're going to stop selling Amazon and go over to Walmart or whatever. That it just it doesn't work like that. Like, if you're good at one of them, you're going to be good. Maybe there's a better opportunity right now for Walmart because there's less yeah. competition and stuff like that. But what do you think is going to happen in like six months, a year? Like, you're going to be put in the same position as you were before. And, you, and it's the same business. You're not even really changing anything. You're not diversifying at all. You're doing the same exact thing as you were doing before. So I see that since about on uh, social media a bit. And I don't think I, there's definitely money to be made there, but I don't think that's going to like solve your problems if you're having lots of Amazon problems. I think that's yeah, just I like. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I don't know much about Walmart, but like, yeah, I could definitely see a lot of more people like pushing that, going over there. And I think, yeah, it would be. I'd, I would almost assume it's like when Amazon first started. So there's probably a lot of opportunity there and stuff like that. But yeah, I think you're right. It's like if you struggle to source or you're struggling with account health issues because of stuff you do or prepping, like it's going to be the same thing over there. It's this like if you suck at sourcing now, like I don't think you're going to be any better sourcing on wall because it's the same thing. Like you got to be able to find stuff cheap. Um, I do think it's an interesting opportunity. I think people do like well there. I know a lot of people are saying they're beating. I saw someone post the other day that Walmart's like basically paying all their bills, like their warehouse, all that kind of stuff. And Amazon's just kind of a secondary um, thing. I don't know. I do think it's interesting. Um, I don't know. I really don't have any desire to <laughs> to go over to Walmart. I'm kind of focused on some other things right now. Um, but yeah, I think in a lot of these opportunities, it is what you make of it. Uh, you know, if, you, if the Amazon fees and all this other stuff, you know, you got to source better products and, you know, who knows, maybe eventually that's a bad answer and you can't outsource the fees. But I mean, I feel like eventually people, it always seems like the winners always figure it out. So yeah, um, you just got to well, figure it out. Well, one thing up. Uh... I think that a lot of people have asked me why I'm stopping the Amazon stuff. I think that's like an interesting topic that I really haven't talked about yet of why that I did decide. Cause uh, there was a tweet on Twitter yesterday. You mentioned it. The, uh, yeah. somebody say you quit at the top of the game. Yeah. Like I, I was making not the best money I've made, ever made. That was probably back in 2020. Cause obviously it was just really good then, which is ironic. Cause I first started, but I was making very good money every month. But the large reason I stopped is because I felt like it was causing me a lot of stress long term to have so much money tied up in inventory all the time. And being the person I am, it just didn't really go well. Like there's, I feel like I'm not this guy that's really analytical and keeps really good track of things. Although I preach that all the time because I know how important it is. I'm not very good at it and I don't really care enough to really do it. So I was getting all these returns, not really handling all this stuff and different leakage within the business. And I think that, uh, I don't know. I realized that the more I grew that Amazon business, the more I'm just going to stay in the same spot. And if not lose yeah. money, you know, that the most money I was making was when I was doing less sales because I was more in tune with everything. And then I realized that at some point, I'm just going to keep trying to grow this thing, try to hit 3 million, 4 million. And I'm just going to end up put myself up for way more risk and mm-hmm. not make it yeah. as much money. So, I, so to me, it just, doesn't seem worth it. A lot of people think, well, why don't you systematize it, make VAs and do it like that? Well, I think that's easier said than done. I don't think that that this business is simple to like everybody acts like that's possible. I don't think it's super possible. I think you need to be in tune with the sourcing and decisions going on because they're always ever changing. It's not like there's actually a system. You know, if you run a wholesale business, that's a little bit different, but with OA, there's always different things going on. You can't just pick like the same thing only all the, like for years, you know, you, that's the hard part about it. It's always changing. Like things can change in a moment. You have to switch directions. So yeah, all that stuff kind of compounded. And I'm like, I, I don't really want to do this long term. And I, I'm only 25, but I just thought, you know, the future, I have a family, that kind of stuff. I don't want 95% of my net worth tied up in inventory that, that is not, and I don't have a customer list for it. I don't have an email mm. list. I don't have customers. I don't even have customers. You don't have customers on Amazon. You just have brand name products, which are inherently worth things. But as I've found out, they're not worth nearly as much as you think they are. You take stuff to Plato's closet, they're going to give you about 10% of the value. You sell them on Facebook, 
you're just going to deal with the poorest people in history. So they're just terrible buyers. So yeah, all that kind of stuff just made me decide to move on with it. And I think that, uh, Okay, if people wondered, that's definitely why. And I think I've learned a lot about marketing and other things. And I think my skill set's just better suited there. Yeah, and I think for like any other business, like I was talking to someone the other day. I was like, this new thing I'm doing is so amazing. I like this, this, that. And he's like, and he's very bullish on selling on Amazon. He's like, what you're doing sounds absolutely terrible to me. And yeah. I like, I love what I'm doing. And so like, I think for everyone, like, yeah, Amazon could be a great fit. I think it also depends on what you're trying to get out of it. If you're trying to uh, make like $10 million, like that's a whole different ball game. If you're just trying to make a couple extra grand every month. Like that's, you know, you could easily do that. Like, it just depends on what you want for it and just kind of what you want to do. Like not everyone wants to like set up funnels and do all this other stuff or enjoy that. Um, I like to make content. So this new thing I'm doing revolves around making content. And I freaking love that. Like, I like that more than sourcing. It's not that I'm not good at sourcing or running an Amazon business. I just found something I like more. I'm still selling on Amazon, still doing well, all that kind of stuff. But I think you just got to find what you want and figure out the problems you want to deal with. I was looking to do all these other different opportunities earlier this year. And I thought I found the one I was like telling you, I'm like, this is it, man. Like, blah, blah, blah. And that lasted like a month. Like you just realized that, yeah, like maybe this isn't in my skill set as much as it was. Um, you, you learn a little bit more, you talk to a bunch of people and you start to hear the problems that are in the new business model. And you're like, I really don't want to do that, deal with that. Like I'd rather deal with my Amazon problems, like with lost stuff, than deal with this problem. So I think in the grand scheme of things, every business is going to have problems, Like there's no business that has no problems. Easy peasy, sit on a beach. Like it just doesn't happen. Yep. Yeah. The, the, the big, yeah. Like you said, everything has problems. Yeah. The, the only reason that I saw, the only thing I think about, well, I mean, I would love to have, we should have a podcast sometime with somebody on here. That's very, uh, very, very bullish on Amazon. That's very pro. And I'd like to have a debate because I think that I have a good argument. That's uh -huh. not as much about it, like in, in many different ways. And I don't want to like defer anybody. So I'm not going to go into all the ways until we maybe do something like that. But yeah, it's like, if, if your goal is to be very rich, you know, millions and millions of dollars liquid in your bank account after tax, you know, three to $5 million, which I consider pretty rich. Like that's kind of the, yeah. the, the marker where you're pretty well off. I don't know if it's even possible to get there with Amazon. And if it is, you're going to be there for a very, very long time, just by the nature of how it all works. Um, yeah, maybe I'm wrong about that. And maybe there are like small exceptions, but I don't know. Now I think that the argument that people say is like, well, that's hard anyway. You do it, you know, but there's definitely just ways you can get there faster without leveraging like all this capital all the time. And a lot of the times when you're leveraging that much capital, it's with an e-com brand and you don't even make the three to 5 million in the e-com brand. You make whatever amount per month, you reinvest it all. And then you sell the brand for like $10 yeah. million or $5 million. And then that's when you get the cash influx. So, and Amazon doesn't have that. So it's very, very difficult to look at like that. But I will say, after selling all my inventory and I haven't bought anything since November. So I've been just dry. I, mean, I don't even think I've said that on here, but I haven't spent since November 1st or something. Seeing my bank account just slowly go up. Like every time I get a 4k payment or a 6k payment out before I'm like, Oh, that's just nothing. I wish it was more. Cause I'm just gonna have right. to put it towards credit card bill. Watching 5k hit your account every day is a crazy feeling. Cause you're just selling off all the inventory yeah. and your bank account actually is going up. It doesn't get shot down by like reinvesting, which does feel pretty good. So if anybody is like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do in the future, you're going to feel pretty good when you get in, you start getting your inventory taken out because it is more money than you think it is. Yeah, for sure. And I think, yeah, that's all. I think it is really hard too is if you don't have a set amount that you're willing to like spend every month. So if like I have a set amount that I'm for this year, like I'm not spending more than that. I'm keeping the business at a certain size. And I think when prior to that there really was no budget or limit for per se i mean obviously didn't wasn't spending million dollars a month or whatever but when you kind of look at it it makes it much easier to identify like 
cash flow? Are you really making money? Because when you're only putting like X amount out, well, you'll see what comes back. What I used to do is like, oh, like if it's profitable, buy it. If it's profitable, buy it. If it's pro that makes it really, really hard to track and see exactly. Obviously, you're using inventory labs and stuff like that and like to get like a pulse on what's really going on. But if you really, really want to see, you know, spending 30K, let's just say, if that was your number, like how much of that comes back in a month or two? But you never really get to see because you got to spend 30K the next month or or whatever the hell you're doing. Um, yeah, it's so, yeah, not it's definitely 30K. interesting. Yeah, it's not like thirty huh? k. It's not thirty k yeah. into X. It's like two k, seven k. Right, 40K. you don't get thirty k. You don't spend thirty k. Um, forty comes back, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna buy more. Like I made ten. Like it doesn't work like that. like I don't even think you could run the business that way. It'd be no. like way too choppy, and you it just wouldn't work that way. Unless you do um, a private label. Yeah. True. Yeah. It is funny. Like I've like definitely seen some stuff or been buying more stuff lately um, from Amazon just for like personal stuff. And you could definitely see some of these like private label products or like stuff my parents buy. They're like, oh, like we just bought this. It's awesome. And you'll look and you just see like these like dry spells. And I was like, oh, these private label like can't keep it in stock or maybe they got to sell out before they buy more inventory. It's just really funny to kind of see them go in and out of stock. And they're like, because they were trying to buy another one. They were like, oh, like, why? Like, you can you find this for us? I'm like, oh, it looks like it's private label. It just says, like, currently unavailable. But you just tell them to keep, a, like, all these, like, spikes of sales. And as soon as it comes back in, like, it goes out. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's, like, the one of the biggest things that with the private label, I guess, is always keeping stock. Because you just never know. You know, but not keep it too much stock because so you're not paying a bunch of storage fees and that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, one thing, that's, speaking on that... Can, do you know what's going on with this inventory placement fee? Because I know people were asking me that question. I was like, guys, I'm yeah. not doing this. So like, I don't, I have no clue what that is. I just know that every time fees hit, it's very bad and they will continue to hit because that's just how these companies work. And that's not just with Amazon. Like every company does this. TikTok right now, they're doing the TikTok shop and there's like 0% fees or like 2%. Yeah. That will go up to 8%. Like that will continue. All these fees will continue to go up. They're not going to give They suck you in. That's what they all do. Yeah. They suck you in. And then like once they have you, then they'll bring it up. So the placement fees, I'm no expert on it. Uh, I've really, there's been like some decent analysis like out there from people on Instagram. Um, supposedly TD, 2D workflow, uh, which, which is a software. I guess similar to inventory labs helps you list inventory. Supposedly they have workarounds. Like if you use that, you could like skip the fee or something. Don't quote me on that. But basically Amazon, I guess, wants you to send basically what you buy to the warehouses they want. So now there's like this tiered system and you could either play inventory placement fee, which means I think I'm not sure if it just sends to one warehouse or just a couple warehouses or exactly. How it used to work, inventory placement, is you would select it. I think it was like 50 cents more per unit. And then they would send to one warehouse. So if you didn't want to send to all these different warehouses, like you would pay the extra. And like the idea would you save on the shipping fees and it just makes sense. Did you do but that? Now they came out with tiers. So like it's like, I forgot what the tiers are, but it's basically like the first tier is like, we're going to split it as many ways as we want. And you're going to like send to wherever we want it. The second one is like maybe two to three splits or maybe three to four splits. And then the next selection is like two to three splits. And like, as you go up, you pay more and more because you're like, you know, sending to less warehouses. I feel like my prep center just did a shipment. It's split to like five different warehouses. Yeah, um, every, okay. So crazy. Every time I've ever shipped anything, oh. that's how it works. Is that not normal? I think it depends on what you're selling to um, and kind of how many you get of each. So, yeah, this one to one, two, three, four, five. I actually went to six different warehouses. Usually it's like for me, it's like two or three. If I prep myself, depending, I, it depends on what it is. Like there's one item that I could recall um, that always went to three different warehouses. Like didn't matter how many I had, 
or how little I had always went to three automatically. But then there's other stuff that I sell that will only shoot to one warehouse, no matter how many I had or how little I have. I don't know. I suppose it's supposed to make Amazon more efficient. I don't know. I've seen some crazy stuff on Instagram where people like are shipping, I don't know, three or four boxes and they use the inventory placement fee and which lopped on like $120 <laughs> uh, on top, which is crazy. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to hurt. My fear with the program is the more I would say places you send to, the more likely your shit is to get lost for sure. Like if you send 20 things in and they're going to send, uh, to four warehouses, five, 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 like, you know, five of those are getting lost or at least two or three of them for sure. Um, so I think that's going to be like a hurdle of it. I mean, I don't know. It's still hard. I think no one really has a grip. Like my first shipment, the prep center did, that was like the first time I had to deal with it. And that's kind of what it was. Um, definitely makes stuff more expensive. And then they're coming out, I think at the end of this month, they have like a low inventory fee. So if you don't keep like enough stock, I guess they're going to like charge you more. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to assess any of these fees on your bottom line without just like kind of selling through and just kind of seeing how it goes. For me personally, I'm just trying to source higher ROI stuff and just have to like pay attention and make sure, you know, that all this stuff is still profitable. But then again, like when these fees come out, like how do you know Inventory Labs is calculating it correctly? How do you know your sales calculators? It just be, creates like a big mess. So I think you just kind of, everyone's just going to have to like kind of fight their way through it. I feel like when other stuff happens, everyone always creates a workaround eventually. And I think that's what we do as sellers. We figure out these like workarounds and then kind of share. But I mean, I think it would be hard to do like some test buying and stuff, like just to buy like five or 10 units or something like that could be harder. Again, it's hard to tell without sending more stuff in or getting like a real grip on it. But yeah, I mean, more fees is never good. Like I'm trying to see the benefit in this. I think they reduced one other fee, but the fee that they reduced doesn't really offset (laughs) the inventory placement. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Yeah, well, I guess I don't have to deal with it anymore, so I don't really care too much. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I I wonder if it's more like who does it hurt the most? Like if it's OA, wholesale, private label, like what kind of business model gets hurt the worst by it? Because, yeah, that's what it seems like the the test spot stuff seems bad. And that's kind of like how I used to run my business a lot. So maybe that would be an issue. Yeah, it's, I've heard like a mixed review. Someone was saying that this will hurt wholesale. So I think it messes with pallets. Like <laughs> if you were used to signing a pallet somewhere um, and they were like making you split up the pallet, um, that would not be good. I mean, I don't, but then I don't know if you're sending... Then I heard someone else say, and this is all just like hearsay from like DMs, not like really factual stuff. They sell a lot of a certain category. Um, and they're like, yeah, this is ineligible uh, for like the cheapest shipping you could get for Amazon because it's a certain product category. I'm like, well, that's interesting. Um, but they're like, if we reached out to support and they said, if we do it in case packs or something, which I've never done. Um, they can ship it. It just seems like I think I just a lot of people have like stuff to figure out and you know need someone like Chris Grant or someone like really good with numbers or something to kind of like spreadsheet it out. But it seems like the low inventory placement is going to be a little harder to calculate because I don't know. After you test buy, some, you might just have to take like a break even on the test buy. Um, and then when you replenish, if you can like figure out like a month or two <laughs> to figure out how much to do. I don't know. I feel like when anything like this happens too, like there's always opportunity in it as well. People drop out or there are certain categories that don't apply to this or I don't know, people merge of a fill who knows. Um, but yeah, it should be interesting. I think they just took effect last week or last Wednesday. Yeah. I think it was last Wednesday. Um, 
So yeah, it should be interesting to see how it goes. And I'm kind of, I know I just paid a lot more money to shipping uh, with the prep center yesterday. So we'll see. Yes. Yep. Well, that's about an hour. If you want to close this out. Yeah. Guys, like, subscribe. Uh, if you want to go to Miami and meet, there will be a link down below. This will be the last podcast before the event. So definitely lock it in. Follow us on socials, especially Instagram now that I have it back. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.